Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the blood supply that ultimately originates from the internal iliac artery. So we'll see a lot of branches, and then in these places over here, I've got it indicated what specific structures are supplied by those vessels. Now, before we get into that, let's review where the internal iliac artery comes from. So remember that kind of up here, we've got this abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta, when it gets to its inferior portion, it really bifurcates into two common iliac arteries. So if we're viewing this from the front, that this is an anterior view, over here, this would be the patient's right common iliac artery. This would be the left common iliac artery. And so if we kind of consider this as our left common iliac artery, that's what we have here. Now, of course, I've omitted the left and right just for the sake of simplicity. But remember, there's going to be double of this. This is the patient's left side. We'd also have the same thing more or less on the right side. So the common iliac artery then itself bifurcates, and it bifurcates into an external iliac artery and an internal iliac artery. Now, the external iliac artery really just continues down toward the inguinal ligament. And when it passes under the inguinal ligament and winds up in the thigh region, it changes names to femoral artery. We cover that in a separate video. Now the internal iliac artery goes within the pelvis and what we'll see is that the vast majority of structures here, that is the vessels, really remain in the pelvic cavity. Now there are a couple of exceptions to that rule where they stay inside the pelvis. Um, that's going to be the obturator artery and the accessory obturator artery. Um, these are actually going to escape the pelvic region and they're going to wind up in the thigh along with the femoral artery. Okay, We'll talk about that when we get there. So internal iliac artery, it really divides again into two major parts, two major divisions. We have over here a posterior division, which we're going to cover first, and then an anterior division, which is right here. And really, the way I've drawn this, this entire curve right here really is the anterior division. Okay. So let's first talk about the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. So it gives off really three branches. The first one is the iliolumbar artery. The iliolumbar artery is really just going to supply the area around the iliolumbar ligament. When we covered the subject of the SI joint and the pelvic ligaments and so forth, we talked about the iliolumbar ligament. This is really just a, a series of ligaments that connect the ilium, that is part of the iliac crest, to on the lower lumbar vertebrae, in particular on their transverse processes. And so this area around that is going to be supplied by the iliolumbar ligament. The second branch is the lateral sacral artery. The lateral sacral artery supplies the lateral border of the sacrum, as we might expect. And so because this is the left lateral sacral artery, it would supply the left lateral border of the sacrum. The right side would be supplied by the lateral sacral artery on the other side that we can't see. And then the third branch, this is really a terminal branch. You could more or less con consider it a continuation of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery, and that is the superior gluteal artery. Uh, this is the largest of these three, okay, so these other two up here are a lot smaller. This one has to be large because it's supplying a bunch of musculature in the gluteal region. And those muscles supplied by the superior gluteal artery are going to be the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. Those two are major hip abductors or abductors, and then also tensor fascia lata, which also contributes to hip abduction among other functions as well. Okay, so those three muscles are supplied by the superior gluteal artery. It's also worth mentioning that to remember that the superior gluteal nerve also innervates these three muscles. One other thing about the superior gluteal artery, and this also goes for the superior gluteal nerve, is that the way it actually gets into the gluteal region is it exits the greater sciatic foramen and passes over the piriformis muscle. I actually have a picture of that on a separate PowerPoint right here. So this muscle is piriformis. And if we zoom in right there, we can see a nerve that seems to be exiting the greater sciatic foramen, which is really just this hole right here. And it seems to be passing over or superior to this muscle. This muscle is piriformis. This is actually the superior gluteal nerve. And although it's not shown there, 
the superior gluteal artery, and vein for that matter, would be following this right next to the nerve. And then this would allow those structures to go and supply those three muscles that I just mentioned. Okay, So that's the superior gluteal artery. So you can kind of see, or kind of guess based on this picture, that the posterior division is actually pretty simplistic. Two true branches and one terminal branch. Okay. Now let's talk about the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. So here's the anterior division, and it really is this entire thing right here. Okay, that's what I was trying to show. It's all of this. And we can see a bunch of branches that come off of this. So the first branch is the umbilical artery. Okay, the umbilical artery is going to supply the umbilical area. Okay, that makes sense. But it itself gives off a branch. The branch it gives off right here is the superior vesicular artery, sometimes called the superior vesical artery. And this artery supplies the superior portion of the bladder, the urinary bladder, which of course is contained in the pelvic cavity at its base. All right? Now, this superior vesicular artery in males also gives off another artery, and that's the deferent artery. And the deferent artery supplies the vas deferens, also called the ductus deferens. This is, remember, a series of ducts within the male reproductive system that allows the movement of sperm cells really from the epididymis, ultimately really into the urethra. So this is a passageway for sperm cells, and that's supplied by the deferent artery, which comes from the superior vesicular artery, which then comes from the umbilical artery. So deferent arteries only in males. So that's the first part of the anterior division. So then, as we follow the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, we see another major branch. This is the obturator artery. Now this is one of the exceptions where the obturator artery is going to exit the pelvic region and it's going to go into the thigh. Um, just to help you kind of visualize that. So if we look here, uh, we already said this was piriformis. Right here is the superior gluteal nerve, and of course with that would be the superior gluteal artery. Now right here you actually see a muscle. This is actually um, obturator internus. This is obturator internus. And you can see that its muscular belly is actually covering the obturator foramen. Now there's a small hole kind of to the top. It's covered up, a very tiny hole. Um, where the obturator artery is going to exit the pelvic cavity and it will then descend into the thigh region. Okay? Remember that the obturator foramen is actually covered by that large obturator membrane, but there is that tiny hole near the top called the obturator canal, which allows for a few structures to exit inferiorly out of the pelvic cavity. One of those is the obturator artery. The other is the obturator nerve. That's the other major one. But the obturator artery itself is going to be a major blood supply for the thigh, particularly of the AD ductors. So for example, adductor longus, abductor brevis, those muscles in that muscle group. Notice that the obturator artery also can give off a branch here called the accessory obturator artery, which can also augment the blood supply of the obturator artery. Now, the accessory obturator artery is about 70% of the time branching from the obturator artery, but notice about 30% of the time, this vessel actually branches off the inferior epigastric artery, which if you remember, that was a vessel that we saw in the abdominal blood supply. So the inferior epigastric artery actually comes off of the external iliac artery, and then it descends down into the thigh region. The other 30% of the time here, the accessory obturator artery branches from the inferior epigastric artery. Now we talked about that in the abdominal blood supply playlist, and if you remember, the inferior epigastric artery actually comes off of the external iliac artery before it crosses under the inguinal ligament. And so that inferior epigastric artery would come off of this, and it would descend into the thigh region just like the obturator artery. So again, there's some genetic variation in a lot of this, um, but most of the time the accessory obturator artery comes off of the obturator artery. So that's the second major branch off of the anterior division. Now if we continue on, we get a series of uh, fairly well uh, explainable arteries. These are pretty straightforward. Um, this first branch that comes off, it depends on what gender we have. In males, this is the inferior vesicular artery, and in females, it's the vaginal artery. So in females, you could probably take a guess at what the vaginal artery supplies blood to. It's the vagina, right? 
Now in males, the inferior vesicular artery, as it's named, supplies the inferior bladder, the prostate, seminal vesicles. It also supplies the vas deferens, just like we saw for the deferent artery, and then the lower part of the ureter, which remember, ureter is part of the uh, urinary system, comes off of the kidneys. Now in females, it's the vaginal artery, so you could take a guess that that supplies the vagina. It also supplies the inferior bladder and the lower part of the ureter, even though I don't have those indicated. And the reason I mention that is because those two structures, the ureter and the bladder, those are not part of the reproductive system. So those are things we have in both males and females, obviously. So vaginal artery gets the vagina, inferior bladder, and inferior ureter, whereas the inferior vesicular artery in males gets the prostate, seminal vesicles, and vas deferens uh, in replacement of the vagina, right? But it also gets the inferior bladder and lower part of the ureter. The next branch that comes off here is the uterine artery. This is only in females. And this supplies the uterus via the broad ligament. So there's a ligament that attaches to the uterus called the broad ligament. The uterine artery travels actually within that ligament um, to get to the uterus. Okay, so that's the uterine artery, and obviously that's only in females. Now the next one is the middle rectal artery. This one just supplies the rectum, okay? The rectum, which is part of the digestive system. The next branch that comes off is the inferior gluteal artery. In contrast, the superior gluteal artery really was the terminal branch of the posterior division, but the inferior gluteal artery is just a normal branch that comes off of the anterior division. Now this is the one we need to talk about because it's very important. The inferior gluteal artery, this one is going to supply mainly the gluteus maximus. Now, the gluteus maximus is a very, very large muscle. In fact, you may not have known this, gluteus maximus is the largest muscle by cross-sectional area in the human body. So, we're meant to have big butts. Glute max, largest muscle. So, the inferior gluteal artery doesn't supply three muscles. It requires one vessel just to get one muscle. Okay, that should tell you how big glute max is. Now, in the same way that the superior gluteal artery traveled over the piriformis muscle, we go back here, what we'll see is that the inferior gluteal artery travels under the piriformis. So, here's our piriformis muscle. Here's the greater sciatic foramen. You can see that hole there. And you can also see right here, this is the inferior gluteal nerve. Okay. It also exits the greater sciatic foramen, but it travels underneath the piriformis, which is why it's called the inferior gluteal nerve. Just understand that the inferior gluteal artery and vein are also traveling with this nerve. And this nerve is really going to go and supply that gluteus maximus muscle. Okay. Um, now, a couple notes here. Um, the inferior gluteal artery, in terms of these arteries, it's the most medial one in the pelvis and it's often moving between the S2 and the S3 roots. Okay? Not that that's super important, but it can help you identify that as a landmark. So inferior gluteal artery supplies gluteus maximus. Now, the terminal branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery is the internal pudendal artery. Now, this we're gonna to have to cover in a lot more detail in the next video, because as you can see here, uh, the internal pudendal artery has other branches that come off of it, and they are gender dependent as in terms of how we name them and what they supply. But just for now, as we conclude this video, the internal pudendal artery is the terminal branch of the anterior division, and it supplies the perineum area, um, and it also runs with the pudendal nerve in the perineum. And in general, this artery is going to branch several times to supply really a bunch of structures in the genital area, okay, along with the rectum, which we'll see in the next video. So hopefully this video gave you a good overview of all the details that we have for branching of the internal iliac artery. In the next video, as I mentioned, we'll actually go further and look at that internal pudendal artery, but we're going to see that the branches are gender dependent in terms of what they supply and how we name them. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.